All right, I'll share my screen. Well, before I do that, we'll go ahead and get started here with our, our uh, 4M analysis. A few people did ask about a stock. Uh, we're gonna go with FICO today. Um, this is a stock I haven't really looked at before. So this will be kind of like looking over my shoulder to see how I look at a business I've really not paid a lot of attention to, but this is probably gonna take, I imagine between 45 minutes to an hour. I'll try to make some time at the end for open q and I do have an hour here until my next meeting, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and dive in. I'll share, and I'll start to get organized here. So I've got ticker ready to go. I have a 4M sheet ready to go and I'll show you where you can find one on your own. Give me a second. Okay, so with the 4M sheets, you can certainly do this on your own. If you guys don't already know, you can go to Tips Get Started. Um, this is essentially the same thing as the onboarding email sequence, but um, you could read through everything uh, on your own here as well. So if you go to Welcome to Ticker, you will see some helpful links and you can find the Excel sheet here. We will turn this into a tool on Ticker that will automate a lot of these steps. So you can avoid the manual process we'll go through today, but this will give you a good idea of the, the whole process E to Z. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. So we're gonna look at FICO. I've got a sheet already created. We have two tabs here. And what I wanna do is I wanna immediately get this loaded up within Ticker. Great, and then I'm just going to copy in some text. All right, because we'll need this throughout the duration of the analysis. We get a score of 16, margin of safety of 80%. Great, okay. All right, we'll jump to tab two here and we're gonna walk through A to Z. This is how I look at a business. Um, obviously, first starting point, you've got your margin of safety. This is the math. We'll, we'll look at this a little bit within ticker and then we'll look at the meaning, moat, and management. So everything past the numbers, we wanna look past the numbers and actually look at the business, the industry, the competition, and the management. So let's dive in. Um, within ticker, this is great sign already. We've, we've got this score, which is pretty good. If you can get higher than 15, that's fairly rare. Um, so this is a pretty strong business financially, um, which is great. Uh, they also have a really high margin of safety. Margin of safety is your difference between the share price and the sticker price. So this is the real value this stock is at today. It looks like uh, a little over 2,300. That's awesome. Um, what I wanna do now is I wanna just flip this to all. And you can see some of the points in time when it's changed between on sale watch and overpriced. I see here, it looks like it's been on sale since about June of 2019, that's great. Um, if you look here, massive pullback, this is March of 2020, that was COVID. Um, that really took off thereafter. Really healthy increase here, that's great. So overall, um, financials look pretty good. I'm gonna jump over to that financials tab. I just wanna look at some of the trends here. We should see on the income statement, the revenue, net income and EPS should see a nice incline. Right now it's flipped to year. So we are seeing that nice incline, that's great. Let's flip it to quarterly. Pretty good. I just wanna go back in time a little bit. Yeah, nice steady increase, that's great. Net income. Yeah, really nice, looking good. Really, really nice improvement uh, this last quarter. I'm gonna jump back to year. Uh, let's go to EPS. EPS is really important because this is, this is how we calculate the 
uh, the sticker price. It's based on the growth rate of the EPS, your earnings per share, which is essentially your net income divided by your outstanding shares. Let's just go back in time a little bit here. Really nice, consistent increase. That's great. That's a healthy business. Excellent. Cash flow. We'll jump to the cash flow statement. We like to look at the free cash flow. This is really good because it's uh, the amount of cash you have on hand. You can spend on research and development. You can spend on marketing. Um, if there's pullback in the market, uh, you don't necessarily have to lay off your employees. You've got some cash there to pay salaries. Um, so that's great. Great sign here. Um, and then we get to the balance sheet. Assets we want to see increase. Same thing here. Pretty level, but nice increase recently. So that's great. Um, liabilities do include like your payroll as well as your, uh, your debt. Debt rolls up under liabilities. We like to see this decrease, but if it increases, it's not a bad thing. It probably means they're growing their their uh, employee population. So that's okay. Let's go down here. We get to debt. Debt, we definitely do like to see decrease. A little level, not too bad. Um, nothing alarming here. You will see this from time to time, but got to keep in mind this stock is 16 out of 20, not 20 out of 20. So um, this debt may be a factor why it's not a perfect 20 out of 20. Um, and let's take a look here at the equity. Equity is decreasing. This should be increasing. So again, probably these two are the reasons why this stock is not a perfect 20 out of 20. So still pretty good stock though. That income statement is, um, that's like picture perfect. That's great. And if I'll look over here to the chat um, every so often, um, just to make sure if there's anything you want me to clarify as we go through, I'll, I'll try to pause and jump over, but I'll keep moving here. Um, so let's jump in. Um, if the stock is on sale, we're going to start adding our points here. Yes, it's on sale. Great. We've got our points pulled over from the score. So we're at a total of 16 so far. We get a max of 40 points we're going for in this forum analysis. So let's really get into the meaning here. Um, the first few questions are going to seem a little weird. They're going to more or less qualify me if I should be investing in this business. Um, it's really good to become knowledgeable within certain industries or sectors because you can see red flags. You can see issues from a mile away. Uh, my background, if you guys don't already know, is tech. So with tech businesses, I kind of know the nuances, what's good, what's bad, what to pay attention to. Um, you know, there's other businesses like pharmaceutical, food industry as well. I, I don't have that inside knowledge of the business or the industry a whole lot. So I, I can't really spot the red flags. Um, so the first, few, we're going to dive in here. First question here, do you understand the business in great detail? In other words, could you easily enter the company in a leadership role like a director, VP, president, C-level, and know how to lead marketing, sales, or operations? I won't read the whole thing, but um, in this business, let's take a closer look. What kind of business is this? Now, I think uh, a lot of people know what FICO is on the surface. It relates to data, but I just want to kind of read through the description here in the details page. All right, so they develop analytic software, data management products and services. All right, enhance, okay, so they, they're in North America, Latin America, Europe, global company, that's great. Credit scoring, that's what they're most popular for. I'm just kind of skimming through. Um, I'd like to jump to their site here. That'll open up a new tab. Let's take a look. So right away on the surface, they're, they're kind of in my wheelhouse a little bit. It's related to data analytics. Um, we'll just pause here and talk about different types of business models. Um, business models that don't have a supply chain or a physical product, like um, I did an analysis uh, on our site yesterday of Tesla. Tesla has their automobiles, so there's a lot of metal, there's a lot of plastics, and we have to source those things through supply chain, 
And if you have any hiccups or holdups in your supply chain process, it can hinder revenue generation. Um, obviously, the more materials, the raw materials that go into a product, the harder your, your uh, supply chain process becomes. Um, so that's a little bit of a red flag. Um, not necessarily a bad thing because Tesla's been doing pretty well so far, but um, jump over to a business with a product such as Apple. Apple has uh, mobile phones. All the materials fit into the palm of your hand. You have you have mostly plastic, some some kind of um, uh, aluminum, I believe, is inside. But but you start thinking about okay, so you need to source those things. Whereas with FICO, this is a business with no supply chain. It's all data. Um, it's it's mainly it, it's almost like a tech business. So scaling revenue, you don't have that. Um, that need to source materials. You can, your, your costs against your actual sale of your product or service, in this case, it's really um, human, human uh, labor. Your, your employee expenses are gonna be huge. Um, you've got your office expenses, you've got software expenses, of course, to you know, keep the business running, but software businesses can usually scale a lot faster than any other type of business model because you're not selling something physical. So I like that already. What I'm going to do here is I don't think I'd be qualified to really jump into this because I don't know credit industry as well, but I know tech. I'm just going to cons conservatively say uh, no point on this. So that's fine. We'll keep moving here. Um, do you know how the products are manufactured and engineered? In this case, I do. This is a, more of a tech business, data analytics. So I'm going to put a one there. Um, data analytics is really important because. So many big businesses have all this outlying data and how do you collect it and, and use it to um, really drive marketing sales and operations. In this case, we're dealing with, uh, you know, data we're using for other companies. So monitoring um, and credit. Let's jump into here. I just want to understand this a little more in detail. What I like to do sometimes is go to FICO Wiki whatever company you're looking at, go to their wiki page. Sometimes they can break this down in layman terms a little easier. Lenders purchase more than 10 million FICO scores, 30 million American consumers. Okay. Founded in 1956, been around a few years. Okay. Started trading 1986 as their IPO. Great. Quite a few acquisitions. Nice. All right. Sometimes that's a great sign if somebody kind of creeps up as a potential uh, competitor. Why not just buy them? All right, and I just want to do the very, I always search for this. How does FICO make money? My guess is it's, a, it's an enterprise sale process, which means you're selling um, your services or their product or product offering to another business for typically an annual fee that can be pretty sizable. My background, I've, I've got a lot of experience with enterprise tech. Um, so think Amazon, Adobe, SAP, Microsoft. Um, usually when customers uh, of equal size or other big businesses, when they purchase products, they're spending uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on up to millions of dollars a year. So I'm guessing they're similar product offering. Yeah, we're not getting to the point here. Um, as you can see, my favorite tools to use are really uh, Ticker and then Google. Let's keep looking at other articles. How much money does FICO make now? Investopedia can be a nice source. A lot of good information here. Data analytics software company that provides products and services to both businesses and consumers. 45 locations worldwide, all right.
I do like this site. They do kind of break down the information in layman's terms, not all the time, but uh, uh, most of the time. Investopedia. It says credit risk. Most mortgage lenders, for example, use the FICO score, right? Let's look at FICO customers. All right, leading us back to the FICO site. Okay, we've got Sony. Some banks, MasterCard, World Pay. These are great customers. I don't want to spend too much time here, but this is kind of the, the hardest part of the process is really understanding the meaning, the business, the industry. Credit systems. Okay. To do is I'm going to jump back a page and just take a look at the. Whoop, I'd like to look at the uh, the Mastercard. This is the business I'm most familiar with. Maybe it'll say here what they're actually doing. Case study. Leveraging advanced technology, identify and prevent debit and prepaid card fraud. FICO uh, customer communication services. FICO Falcon platform sounds like one of their software platforms. All right, MasterCard's industry-leading fraud protection platform has improved the customer communication experience, prevented millions in fraud. That's important. All right, so we know they are they're they're selling their products to large businesses. So I can tell you already, it's it is an enterprise play. I'm going to jump back to our 4M sheet. Um, my background with enterprise software like this is it's uh, we'll get into this next question here, but it's it doesn't happen overnight. It's not like buying something online like from Amazon or, or paying for Netflix or Spotify. You put in your credit card and you move forward. That's a B2C, a business to consumer play. This is enterprise. In this case, sales cycles take a long time. So what you do is like a company like FICO is going to approach, they're going to pitch to, let's say, MasterCard, and they're going to um, identify their or uh, hear out their problems, right? And MasterCard will say, hey, here's the issues. FICO will say, hey, here's the tools we have. And then in some cases, they're going to explore options and how do we solve these problems? There's all the nuances you have to uncover in the sales process at the enterprise level. It can take months. Sometimes it can take over a year. So it's a long sales cycle. But you secure a big contract like that it can be highly lucrative. Um, and typically, like here, this is something to pay attention to is when you sign a contract at the at a software level, typically it's not one year. It's it can be five years, seven years, sometimes 10 years. That's great. That's that's consistent reoccurring income for you know years on up to a decade. So that's great. We like um, really healthy revenue streams like what FICO is doing, smart business model. Um, when you jump back to the financials and you look at the revenue and net income, it makes perfect sense. When you start taking these back in time, whoops. Here we go. That nice steady increase is really good to see. Revenue. Same thing, nice steady increase year over year over year, <laughs> last 10 years, that's, that's a healthy business. It's great. All right, I'll keep moving here. What is the payment structure? No credit cards in this business model. You're dealing with big numbers. So what you do here is you're, you're usually dealing with uh, checks, some kind of check, a purchase order process and a check. Um, got a lot of money going through mail that way, but uh, that's just uh, the way it works at this level. Um, so I'm going to put a one there. I understand that. All right. Can you list the top five competitors? Now we're going to um, start doing a little Googling. All right. FICO competitors. Let's see what we got. My guess is they don't have many. Okay. 
hold on here. Political competitors, Pfizer, Western Union. Okay. All right. So this next step, what we want to do is start using a, a ticker. I like to open up a few tabs so I can keep them open. And we'll be able to automate this with uh, ticker when we actually add this tool within. But for the time being, I have to open up a few tabs. But let's see if we can start finding these businesses if they're publicly traded. No, not that one. Okay, Pfizer is. Let's see what we got here. I thought they were. Hold on. F I S V. There we go. Okay, we got one. Let's start dropping some of these in. ISV. Um, we'll keep going here. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put in up to five different competitors. In some cases, I won't get them all. Um, next one, Western Union. So I'm going to keep this tab open so we can reference Pfizer, but let's just go to Western Union. I think they are public. Western Union Company. Okay, you can see the difference here. Uh, Jump to the US dollar. Pretty decent score, margin of safety not as strong. So we'll put in WU here. All right. Let's see who else. Tan, tandem seven, never heard of them. No, nothing there. Okay. Uh, CGI group, see if they're public. Uh, this might not be the same thing. CGI Inc. might be a different business model. Uh, maybe, let's take a look here. We'll go to their website, CGI. Just skimming through here. They might be a competitor. Global Insights, all right. Sometimes if you can go to their, they've got a about page, you can get right down to it. Looking list, okay, it doesn't help. Business consulting services firm, it's driven, insights driven. I keep seeing that. So it's related to data. I don't, yeah, I don't see him as a competitor. I'm gonna keep moving here. Q2 software, let's check that out. Q2 holdings, this might be something different. You gotta kind of look at the business model. Digital banking, so well, that is the same thing, okay. All right, so QTWO, we'll throw that in there. Try to find one more. So far, you guys can see in comparison, um, the score and the margin of safety, uh, not quite there with the competitors. The closest one here looks like Western Union. All right. Where was my tab? There we go. All right, Cineverse, never heard of them. I'm up on a, another window here. Mm 
Mm, nothing there. Okay. Let's see if I put the whole name in. Nothing. They're not public. Okay. All right. Absolute data transunion. Transunion is public. Let's let's throw them in there. Okay, we'll use this TRU. So we'll use four competitors as a good benchmark. And I completed this task. So I'll put a one. Do you understand the sector? Now here, you should be able to do this without doing any homework in Google or Ticker. You should understand the sector we're dealing with. So in this case, I know this is data analytics is more the industry. The sector is tech. So tech companies that come to mind, I always put some of my favorites down. Microsoft, Apple. I'll just list a few that are in my portfolio. You got Fortinet, UCTY, and then I'll go ahead and I'll put in on PLTR. PLTR is probably the closest to the business model because they are related to data analytics. Another business would be Alteryx, A-Y-X, but I'll just list these side. But this should be really quick. You should be able to knock this step out because you know the industry. Um, I do put FICO more in that data slash IT. Uh, they're definitely a tech business. Okay, will this business be around in the next 10 years? And by this point, after doing your homework and walking through and understanding the business model, this is absolutely, data is so important. Um, FICO, you know, we were reading a lot of information that related to risk and risk uh, reduction, and, and um, that's a big deal. So we know this is going to be around in 10 years. All right, we're going to transition to the moat, start comparing these businesses to the competition or uh, comparing uh, FICO to the competition. All right. And we will be able to automate this with uh, ticker when we add it within the tool. Um, what are the, the competitors MOS? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just copy, paste, and we'll start knocking this out. Start with, uh, start with Pfizer, MOS, got a 1%. Um, T or WU is 32%. Okay. Two percent. All right. Next up. Q2, one percent again. All right. And transunion. Also 1%. Okay, so far we're stacking up pretty good versus competition. It's a great sign. All right, completed that step. We'll keep moving. Oh, what are the competitor scores? So what I'm going to do is just copy the same bunch, drop them here, and I'm going to replace these percentages with the scores. So Pfizer is a 9, TransUnion is a 16. And the next two, we've got uh, Q2 at six, TransUnion at 12. All right, looking good. That, uh, we've got two above 10, which is a pretty good sign for both these businesses, Western Union and TransUnion. All right. And the summary. Just copy paste, drop these in. I think we've got an overpriced watch, overpriced watch. Okay. So from FICO standpoint, they're looking good um, with uh, Western Union and TransUnion. They're close to on sale, but not quite there because their margin of safety 
is uh, less than 50%. So we completed that step. Okay, now what we wanna do is we would just wanna get a good idea of what the free cash flow and the debt looks like. So let's jump back to, we've got FICO here. Most recent free cash flow, 342 million. And let's break down the list here. And just copy paste again. I can't wait for this to be automated within ticker, but for now we'll have to use uh, Excel. So Pfizer, let's jump in. Actually, I can start to get these loaded up. Okay. Pfizer, wow, 3.2 billion. We've got some cash to play with. All right, next up, Western Union, 841 million. Okay, Q2. Ah, negative, negative 27. That's not good. And last one here, TransUnion. Well, we're looking at 578. Okay. So interesting, um, these businesses, uh, especially Pfizer, Western Union and TransUnion all have more free cash on hand, um, good for them. But you can see here, FICO is applying their cash a little more efficiently, uh, knowing that their entire business model is, uh, you know, the, you've got the higher margin of safety and the higher score. This is a, a better run business for sure. Good to see, uh, it still has pretty high cash on hand. Um, but some of these, like that 3.2 on Pfizer, they are a big business, that is for sure. Um, a, lot more, um, a lot more products and services outside of this space. So um, this is more of a focused business model, whereas Pfizer is uh, more of a conglomerate in comparison. But anyway, cool to see we completed that step. We'll keep moving. All right, let's take a look at the debt with this group here. I'll erase those numbers and let's just get this synced up a little bit. All right, jump down to debt. 834. All right, Pfizer. 19 billion. Ooh. It's a lot of debt. All right, keeping it moving. Five sixty. All right. Words. Q two. Okay. And TransUnion, last one. 110. Nice improvement there. Good for them. Went from 3.7 to recently 110 million. Nice. All right. So looking here, pretty close to Q2 regarding debt, but um, that Pfizer is definitely really high. So um, not too bad. I don't see anything uh, too alarming here compared to the, uh, the competition. We'll complete, or we'll put a one here for completing this step and we'll keep moving. But, but overall, it uh, does make sense that the financials here are a little stronger with FICO than the competition. 
Okay, final stretch here. We've got the management. So this will probably lead us back to Wiki, but FICO CEO, who's leading? Okay. I'll get that window opened and let's see. Uh, yeah, let's check out his LinkedIn. I'll usually go to uh, the website, LinkedIn, and then Wiki. See if he's got his own wiki page. Not seeing his name. No, that's okay. All right, let's see what he's got here. Before joining FICO, he served as CEO and president of InfoSpace and also CEO and president of Value Vision Media. Let's take a look at these types of businesses. This is going to require a little bit of homework. Value Vision Media. Never heard of it. InfoSpace. Okay. Was this purchased? Blue Cora? Space changed its name to Blue Cora. Okay, looks like they they changed their symbol in 2012. All right, let's uh, let's take a closer look at this business's performance through the years. All right, he was a partner at General Atlantic Partners, a global private equity firm. Um, pause here. I like people, I like CEOs that have a background in private equity, investment banking, or management consulting, because you're, you're typically, you have to be really good at finance. You have, to, you have to understand the economics of businesses. You have to understand what impacts those economics. Usually those jobs force you into positions that you gotta learn really fast. Um, these positions can also be pretty high stress, um, a lot of pressure. Um, so you, you know how to work well under pressure, which is it's great training, especially if you're going to be a CEO of a company someday. Um, so that's great. Private equity background is a good sign. He also held leadership positions at GE. I have background at GE as well. Uh, Prodigy and McKinsey. McKinsey is a big management consulting firm. So he's got both PE and management consulting background. That's great. He served on the board of FICO since 2006. All right. Pretty good background I'm seeing so far. I wish maybe his LinkedIn will show. Uh, there we go. Okay. We can check out the background here. Info space. 2009, 2010. It's pretty short duration. I was hoping for a few more years, but what I'm doing here is um, Info space, blue Cora. We want to look at how did that perform while he was leading the company. This can sometimes be fascinating. So let's take a closer look. 2009 through 2010, end of 2010. All right. Yeah. We're adjusting our charts so we can go further back in time, but let's go to Google. Um, blue Cora stock. What we want to do is we want to see what this would look like. We'll hit max. Yeah, that doesn't really help us. I have no idea what happened here. 6,000 a share. Uh, who knows? All right, so that doesn't really give us a lot of answers here. I still like his background a lot. Um, let's look at another business, InfoSpace, uh, Value Vision. That's the one. Okay, see if they're public. Sometimes you can type in a business, put stock after it, and you will see if it's, uh, it's public. This is saying Shop HQ, Cable Satellite Broadcast. I'm guessing Value Vision might be a subsidiary. Really cheap stock too. So not a lot to go off there, but 
Um, what I do like about Will is he's really been involved with the company since 2006. So a solid 15 years. So looking at uh, FICO, you know, we'll, we'll use Google instead of ticker because tickers, uh, its chart is showing, I'll show you guys here just real quick again, is right now we're showing the last five years, but uh, our engineering team is working on this. So it shows as far back in time as we have data or when the company went public. So it'll look more like Google, but anyway, it's got a FICO. Stock, we'll just go to max. Oh, come on, there we go, okay, all right. So if you look here, 2007, 2006, it looks like it was really 2012, 2013 is when it really started to take off. Cool, um, nice steady increase there. In here, those first few years, just really level. So obviously you can't put all that on a CEO, but you do like to pay attention to see how the business did perform. So let's jump back to our analysis sheet. All right. Does the CEO have a track record of increasing the share price over the last 20 years? Well, we definitely know over the last seven or eight years, that's a strong yes. I'm going to put a one here. Since the CEO arrived at the company, his share price increased. Absolutely. That's a good sign. Um, does this guy remain quiet on social media? Personally, I don't love social media. I see the value in promoting brands, but CEOs, my opinion, stay off of it. All right, so Will, sometimes what I like to do is, well, Lansing, Twitter. I'm guessing there's going to be little to no activity here. He doesn't even have his, uh, his name highlighted here, which uh, is a good sign. He's not even on Twitter. That's great. Stay off social media. Just focus on providing value to your customers. That's what we like to see. Um, and if he doesn't have a Twitter, he most likely doesn't have an Instagram. I'm not even going to look. All right. This is one to pay attention to if a, if a share price declines, you can look at like, um, you can do some Googling to see if they took a big bonus, even though when the share price uh, or the stock started to fall. In this case, we haven't seen a big drop. Um, I don't even care because the business continues to increase um, consistently. Their revenues, their income, their EPS, all those uh, metrics on the income statement look outstanding and they have this nice incline. So if he's taking a bonus, he rightfully deserves it. Um, there hasn't been a big pullback or big issues. All right, last question here. Uh, do they spend their money on needless things, private jets, Lamborghinis, all that kind of noise? Uh, let's take a look here. My guess is no. I'm just going to put in spending. Uh, it's going to relate to the business. Um, money spending habits. I'm guessing there's going to be nothing here. Yeah, it's going to be relating to the business. You're not really seeing any news or red flags. Sometimes when you search for a CEO, in some cases, um, you're going to see, uh, you'll see some red flags in the news right away. In this case, it seems like just a regular guy trying to run a business as best as he can. So in this case, um, if no, apply one point. We're going to put no here. So there we go. We have completed our 4M analysis of FICO, the highest score um, I was able to come up with, which is 35, which is pretty good. Um, actually, here it says it's great. So, so this, is a, this is a great business. Um, overall, really strong financials. Uh, against the competition. They're looking great. Um, they definitely stack up really well. They're ahead of everybody. Um, it's in an industry we know it's going to be within or uh, around in the next 10 years. And this is run by um, a really strong CEO. Will, Will Lansing is a, a great leader. And I think he'll continue to 
lead this business uh, well in, into the future. So good for him. So yeah, there you go. Um, I, I have a pretty solid portfolio as of now, but uh, if I do start selling some stocks, I may actually consider FICO. This is, this is good business. So, cool. That wraps up uh, the analysis. I've got about um, 14 minutes or so here to answer any questions. If you guys, guys have any. No questions? I'll give you another minute or so and I can hang on. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the feedback. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how I look at businesses. It's, it's not always uh, the most glamorous process to really look past the numbers, but it, uh, if you want to do it right, you got to look at all the other facets of the, the business, the meaning modes and management. So we'll wait one more minute and then we'll, we'll end for the day. Cool. Okay, guys. Well, Thank you for jumping on and we'll get this uploaded to YouTube, All right? We'll see ya.